Hey, what's up, everybody? This is your girl, the priestess, Yanni T. Just a heads up for this episode of Conversations with the Priestess. I am dealing with some deep material and some of the things that I talk about, such as abuse, sex, and different types of violence may trigger those of my listeners that have dealt with these things. So I just wanted to give this warning of what I'm about to talk about in this episode for Diary of a Church Girl, Chapter 2. I love y'all. Live, love, and be free. Let's start the show. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is your girl, the priestess, never your mistress, Yanni Taylor. Honey, here's another episode of Conversations with the Priestess. So get your libations and get your ancestors and sit down and have a conversation with your girl. What's going on, my yayas? Welcome to another episode of Conversations with the Priestess. Thank you all for your love and your support. Thank you for those who have liked my videos on TikTok. For those that are wondering what I've been up to, um, I have been rebuilding myself and reworking my brand and working on me. However, y'all don't want to hear about that. However, I do want to say that the last seven days have been wonderful. Over the weekend, I had the opportunity to actually go out and enjoy the warm weather. It got so warm on Sunday. I was out there in my nice little denim dress with my legs and thighs showing, fresh pedicure, compliments of myself, and I just felt overall good. And I'm grateful and thankful because this is the this uh, this is one of the times in the last couple of weeks that I have felt so wonderful. And I tell y'all, depression is real, but Miss Thing is not going to win. And I'm grateful for having a support system that has been keeping me going. And I'm grateful um, for some opportunities that have come across my desk. So a little bit of housekeeping. Again, thank you. But when you're listening to this podcast, I have a hashtag that I want you all to use. Many of you all have seen that on social media, have seen that on my platforms. It's hashtag talk, the number two priestess that makes hashtag talk to priestess. Whenever you're listening to this podcast, whatever platform that you are on, please, please Hashtag talk to priestess. That lets me know that you all are listening and that hits that algorithm. Okay. Can y'all do that for me? So I want to know your thoughts. Um, you can also email me, email talk to priestess at gmail.com. And of course you can tweet me at CWT priestess on Twitter and Instagram. I have some great things that I'm getting ready to put out on Patreon. Um, The Patreon link will be below. Um, I will be reviewing and giving my thoughts on the Hillsong documentary. Um, I am really interested in this project. As you know, I'm a former church girl. You know, I'm a church girl at heart, but I'm a former church girl. And later on in the episode, we're going to go into chapter two of Diary of a Church Girl. So... With all the big news that's out, um, one of the hot topics for this week is the fact that entrepreneur and billionaire, you know him from Tesla cars from for creating Tesla, um, SpaceX and him taking a journey into space. Well, Elon Musk put in a bid to buy Twitter. A little over a week ago and this week Twitter has agreed to Elon Musk's um, 44 billion dollar takeover and as we know um, Elon Musk has a has a very very dirty history of being racist being all kind of transphobic misogynistic and everything and now that he's now that he and Twitter have agreed to this bid, um, that ugh, I'm concerned about this platform because, as you know, he is a proponent and a 
big proponent of free speech. However, his idea of free speech is being able to say whatever the hell you want and there's no consequence. You won't get banned and all of this stuff. And it's, it's, it's been, it's, it's been wild. It's been wild. And a lot of people are seeing the harm that this is going to cause because we've seen an uptick um, in a lot of Republican people and a lot of racist and people that are against everything right. We've seen the resurgence of this in numbers and a lot of politicians, a lot of right um, right wingers have been sounding off about how when they've gotten banned or suspended from Twitter, Twitter violated their right to free speech which that's not how it works free speech is basically a pr- a principle that you don't have to fear government retaliation you don't have to fear getting jailed you don't have to get you don't have to have fear of getting your life taken away just by speaking your mind on a public forum however we as users of Twitter who refuse to deal with hate speech, misogyny, misogynoir, transphobia, homophobia, any and everything that goes against people being human and being treated like humans and simple speaking our mind against unjust policies, we're at risk of being pushed off of the platform in a sense because of people who really want to, this is what it boils down to, is the point of people using free speech as a pass or hate speech. And that's what everyone is against, hate speech. We know that Elon Musk actually canceled somebody's Tesla order because they said something that he didn't like or the fact that he hid black workers, black employees in different places in the factory when, you know, it was time for the factory to be licked over and I have a problem with that. He has a nasty track record, not to mention all of the lawsuits that he has, which I'm not going to go into detail, but just looking in the Twitter streets and so many people saying, yeah, we're going to get our free speech back on Twitter. Baby, you never lost your free speech, your free speech. You lost the ability to say whatever the heck you want and offend people and threaten people. That's why your ass got banned. But now with Elon Musk buying Twitter, that is a major concern for those of us who are activists, those who are black, queer, and trans. Not only that, but what if he decides that you have to now pay for Twitter? And I feel like the the setup is going to be like the infamous parlor and sites like that where a lot of the right wingers and the Trumpists and those that followed him created these sites to talk mad shit spill out conspiracy theories, spill out misinformation about the pandemic, spill out misinformation about everything about laws, about the president and all kinds of things. And to me, we're seeing a new way of racism. Like in the olden days, they invented ways to be racist and, and all kind of hateful and things. And I, this is what I, this is what I feel that it's coming to with Twitter. But we're going to see how this turns out because I have a feeling him buying Twitter is going to crash and burn before his eyes because we were always taught what profits a man to gain the world then lose his soul. Not condemning anybody to hell, but you can have all the money in the world. That doesn't mean anything. If you don't have some type of heart, you can have all the power in the world. If you don't have any kind of heart, any kind of compassion or anything, then it means nothing because it can get snatched away in a moment and you can lose yourself in power. And this is a power, power play. This is just a power play to him. And it's, it's extremely stupid. It's extremely stupid. And I'm all, I'm all for free speech, but I do believe when you say stuff that causes harm, that causes other people to be harmed, spreads propaganda against particular groups of people, then you should be shut down. You should be shut down, plain and simple, because everybody on Twitter, they don't think before they tweet. They don't think before they speak. They tweet or say the first damn thing out of their fucking mouths. Case in point, I was on Twitter earlier today. And... A man of color, 
i.e. a black man, made a comment about people who do sex work. And I'm going to go off. I'm going to really go off on this. So this person says, I'm not going to even give their Twitter handle. And yes, yes, they are a podcast host. They are a podcast host. And if you go on my Twitter page, if you go on my Twitter page, you will see the exact tweet that I'm talking about. And the fact that, yeah, I'm just looking, I'm just looking at the podcast and they actually have an episode about protecting black men, which I'm going to, I'm going to check that out. And just looking at some of the topics discussed, you can tell that this is a podcast with black men that talk dumb shit and trash black women in my opinion. And no, I'm not going to listen to this podcast because this tweet says everything. But this person said in the tweet, it says, <clears throat> having to fuck people in order to pay your bills don't sound wild to y'all. And of course, the Twitter streets have went off. One, t- one, one, one tweeter says, we are all getting fucked to pay our bills. That's the real gag. And also someone says, having to do some shit you don't enjoy for 40 hours to pay your bills don't sound weird to you. Mm. And you know what's so crazy? The fact that he is coming for sex workers and people that think like him annoy me. Number one, before you judge sex work, let's look at the strippers that you go support in the strip club. These exotic dancers. Um, let's look at the fact that a lot of y'all talking against sex workers and I don't care if you're man, woman, you're non-binary trans. I don't care who you are. Anybody that wants to come down and talk about people, um, escorting and selling their bodies or making content. Number one, you like to watch porn on Pornhub, don't you? You like to watch, uh, uh, you like to watch your little flicks and stuff and get your willies off. You like to watch the little clips on Twitter and, and, you know, get, get your release right so if you want to talk about sex work stop supporting the porn industry stop uh, uh, stop supporting the adult entertainment industry because that's sex work as well and it's I find it funny that people have the stigma about sex workers for I'm coming for someone who was a sex worker at one point who has done sex work and to be honest if times got hard And I had to, yes, I'm going to be real with y'all. I would do what I have to do to survive. Now, I'm not advising anyone to do that, but that's just me and mine. That's just me and mine. You don't have to like it. Oh, well, I mean, that that's just my life. But some people, but the main reason why some people get into sex work is for means of survival. There are some people who have the luxury of doing it just because it looks interesting. But a lot of times for my, from my experience and from various people, it's for survival or it may be something they may have been pushed in at a young age. You don't know anyone's story as to why they do sex work. And the fact that we have black men, yes. And some black women, And a lot of religious people wanting to talk down on people who decide to sell their body. And I was sharing my experience with someone over the weekend about me being in sex work and there, and it was given the situation that I was in. And it was like with everything that was supposed to have been there for you, you shouldn't have had to sell your body. And I, I get that. I get that, you know, Sex work is not for everybody, but that was a choice I made. That was a choice I made and I don't regret my journey. Yes, there have been times to where I wanted to start back doing sex work, but I decided not to. But before you open up your mouth and talk about someone um, doing sex work, whether it's on the street, online or however they do it, Number one, you can shut up and mind your business because you never know who in your circle could be doing sex work. The pandemic hit people hard. The pandemic hit people hard. 
and life has hit he has hit people hard yes it is the oldest profession in the book and because of cultural norms and societal norms of course it was looked down upon yes of course it was looked down upon but they got their money they got their money heck even god used the hoe let's talk about sister rahab for a minute all these church folks out there preaching um, against sex work and talking about prostitutes. Half of these pastors been out there caught. Half of these politicians been out there caught with sex workers. That's why you see so many policies out there. And then along with that, you know, back to Rahab. Rahab, if you look in your Bible, she was instrumental concerning the fall of the wall of Jericho. And this is for my biblical people and my church people that listen to my podcast. I told y'all I'm a former church girl. I know a little bit of word and I'm not going to deliver a whole sermon, but it's funny that y'all want to talk about these same sex workers acting as if because they're selling their body, that they're not out there feeding the homeless people, taking in your kids that you kick out because of who they are. These same sex workers are out there. You think they're just funding a lavish life, lavish lifestyle, but a lot of times they use what they got to help other people that may be out on the street, not just their bills, not just what they need. And I'm like this. If you're calling attention to it, call it see why people are in sex work I will never forget I was asked last year why I was in sex work and I said well I got bills to pay and it pays the bills right now I need all the money that I can get well you know just be careful I'm like well nobody else seems to want to help me in this time just because of where I was at and I get it people couldn't help that's a whole nother story but never Never, ever, never sit there and judge anyone based off of what you see. You don't know what that person could be going through. That person that's in sex work may have just lost their job because of discrimination. That person may have bills to pay that are stacking up beyond what their pay can get. We have a lot of people living on minimum wage. People in America are not even making a livable wage. Not only that, but Let's talk about discrimination with trans, queer, non-binary people, non-gender conforming people. Come on now. Like, and it's funny that a lot of people say, oh, look at all the women getting upset. There is a double standard when it comes to sex work. Men are applauded for being gigolos and for selling their junk. But let a woman do it. We don't value ourselves or we don't love ourselves. And we're looked at as common horse with daddy issues. Well, baby, men have daddy issues too. Masculine energy has daddy issues too. We all got daddy issues. So that double standard is annoying as fuck. If men can be praised for it, women can be praised for it too. Because it's, and I look at it like this, since we're talking about transactional sex, in a lot of instances, some married people have transactional sex they do things that they look at look down upon sex workers from if you marry or have a boyfriend and you want that bag that you saw out of the store you want a pair of shoes or you want a good meal you're gonna make sure that you do what you got to do to secure the bag and y'all want to talk about single people or even people who are doing let's talk about people doing sex work like we were talking y'all want to have all this shit to talk about people being whores and selling their body baby married people do it too so don't sit here and try to play me in my face like come on again if y'all want to if y'all if y'all have an issue with sex work stop watching porn stop going to the strip club and shut the fuck up that's what you can do like it don't take all of that it really don't take all of that i just want people to mind their business and especially if don't speak about something that you don't know about that, that that's all you can do is just shut up okay okay like for real just shut up but but in entertainment news um there has been a poster that has been premiered for an upcoming Whitney Houston movie entitled I Want to Dance with Somebody. Of course, um, you know, this is going to deal with the late, great Whitney Houston, an awesome Grammy award winning 
world-renowned artist. Even to this day, she is doing a great work. Um, and it, it read, um, in this, oh my gosh, it shows the star of this biography, this movie, rather, this biopic. Um, Naomi Aki dressed in a black leather jacket with a white tank top, some nice jeans on and some nasty boots some nasty ankle boots and if you are are, are true Whitney fan you know that this is what she wore for her so emotional music video and her arms are open wide as if she's like embracing life embracing stardom and Clive Davis is producing the movie and he says the goal is to come up with a very realistic, very honest story, as well as capturing her losing battle with addiction, capturing her vocal genius and influence on music and contemporary musicians. Now, I do have a problem with him saying her losing battle with addiction. I feel some type of way about that. Anyway, he's saying that this is to present the full story of Whitney Houston impeccably and to ensure that it will be realistic in every aspect. So, um, this film is written by Anthony McCartan, who also wrote the Oscar winning Bohemian Rhapsody telling of the queen frontman Freddie Mercury. Um, many of you all remember the late Freddie Mercury. He's an awesome person. And, and I do want to see this film. I do want to see this film. However, one of the conflicts is that with everything that is going on with biopics since Whitney Houston died, I feel that they should let her rest in peace. But I do feel that this is a biopic to kind of redeem all of the other biopics, especially the one that really should have been the life of Bobby Brown at that time and not shading anyone. That's just my opinion. But I, I see where that where the direction went. It really chronicled her life with with Bobby Brown in a sense. And I'm not taking away from that work or criticizing a black woman's work, but I do I, I do want to see something that captures it a little bit better. Um, and I know there's issues with the state and stuff that that the public is having, but I, I really want to see this. And if it's redeeming, I just hate that it, sh it, it wasn't done first, but no word yet on when it's coming out. We just know that it's coming soon. And when it comes out, I do want to see it. I do want to see what it gives. I do want to see what it gives. So y'all, I'm going to take a quick break because a girl needs to refresh herself. It is still allergy season. So y'all listen to these church announcements and I'll be right back. Visibility is very important when it comes down to being trans in America. We want to take time to celebrate a national grassroots organization that is designed to help the TGNC community thrive. I am proud to be a part of this team and a wonderful work. I present to you and I introduce you all to Visible T365. This lovely organization based out of Philadelphia is doing the work to bring resources for personal, spiritual, mental, holistic growth to the trans, the gender non-conforming community, and this is a great, great, great organization to be a part of. If you would like more information, you can find Visible T365 on Instagram, Facebook. The links are in the show notes below. Please, please support this wonderful organization. Let's continue to grow. And if you need help and you're in the Philadelphia area, or you just need help, period, wherever you are, reach out to Visible T. 365 and we'll be there for you hey what's up fam this is your girl yanni i'm back um before we get started into chapter two of diary of a church girl i have a few announcements um first and foremost i want you all to check out a safe space for black queer and trans people go on over to black and gay.com the links are in the show notes this is a community of black indigenous people of color um lgbtqia plus community uh, this is dedicated to create change promote businesses and collab amongst people of color that happens to be in all of those categories um, lovely staff 
they have a membership to uh, that you can join as well and you get access to various things but also this goes to support the ecosystem um, that is being built um, oh my gosh it's, it's lovely it's very lovely I want y'all to check this out go to blackandgay.com you won't regret it and also as you are listening to this part of this episode I want you all to hashtag church girl and that's church g-u-r-l again that's church g-u-r-l church girl let me know that you're listening and you can use the hashtag talk to priestess so tonight we're gonna I mentioned being sat down in last episode in chapter one and I'm looking at my journal as I'm sitting here and you can hear the pages turning to where I wrote down things that I remembered during this time. So um, there was one point to where I was sat down and this was allegedly because of my mental health. Um, And at this time, the other minister was like, the pastor prophets pastor teachers i'm sorry pastor teacher pastor prophet interchangeable um right now because we called him that last episode but um pastor teacher um that the other minister was his right hand man but i will always get lashed out on by pastor teacher so he's quote unquote sat me down but what was funny i was able to serve at other churches and typically when a person is sat down the old school was like, you can play at any other churches. You set yourself down and got yourself together, which I find problematic, but th- I'm going to talk about that in another time. But during this time, I was playing at one church on second and fourth Sundays. And at another church, I was doing praise and worship there and killing it over there, killing it every Sunday. Every Sunday was just killing it, killing it, killing it, like slaying down and I worked there from like 20 around about 2019 to August going into September of 2020 was when I quit working there and I'll get into a little they're going to come up at a crucial moment so at this at this point I'm making my money doing my side gig playing and didn't make anything at the other church unfortunately that was a joke anyway um and and i'm like okay i'm sat down so i just enjoyed sitting down like i didn't even try to get into anything i just focused on me and i was excelling and by the time they were needing a musician to play so i ended up having to play but one of the things during this time that I hated the whole time that um, now when the church first started, I was doing praise and worship and everything. And then they start getting guest musicians on the times that I was there. So because they played different to me and they're a little more skilled than I am in certain areas at the time, they were asked to come play. I'm like, cool. And I will learn my chords and stuff, be practicing. But. It was like at that time, and this was before I started transitioning, like I was celebrated. I was doing the dang thing. But when it, when I really settled down into my transition, that's when it really became a problem. And that's how we're at the point we're at now. And mind you, at this point, I am venturing out meeting new people in the city at this time. And I ran into a friend, we'll call him BJ. If people that are people that are close to me will know who I'm talking about. So BJ and I, we were tight. We were cool, but they had their ways and certain things I didn't go for. They're the loud over the top type and willing to try and hit everybody. And I couldn't, you know, but one thing that he did do, he was like, girl, you're a singer. You do all this stuff. Girl, we need to get you out there. You doing all this singing. And we were playing around with photography and he said, girl, help me test out this camera. And I was doing poses and he was like, Yannick, you're gorgeous, girl. He was like, we need to, we're going to work on your makeup. So meeting different makeup artists through this individual, 
thank you, Father. And move, and I had to say thank you, Father, because I got some connects and meeting other people on media platforms. And I've been watching them and I'm like, okay, that's cool. But me as a trans woman and dealing with other gay men, I'm like, okay, now I know I can recognize my lane for me. And I start looking at other trans creatives and connected to some. And so I started working on my brand at this time. This was like in 2019, right? Like all 2019 working slang and mind you, I'm still going to church and when my and I was telling I was sharing all the good things that were happening with my with pastor teacher and pastor teacher is like oh that's good that's wonderful I'm happy for you well I ended up doing an open mic night and BJ took some pictures of me while I'm live in action and I loved every bit of it. I still have the pictures to this day in my phone I have them saved to drives I have them saved on hard drive so I'm not playing with these pictures and they caught me enjoying my life enjoying um, everything about my life in that moment I was on the stage singing and I'm progressing in my transition at this time I'm happy so I started um, and I and one of the young ladies BJ ended up knowing and she and I connected and I went on to do a couple of things with her I was at the height of getting recognition and I was at the height of my career in a sense. It was taking off on one level. So I was growing in my career. I'm not going to say at the height, but I was having a good, a good time, a good season. And I went to church that Sunday morning to do my thing. And everybody was like, oh my gosh, the opportunities that are coming your way, you are expanding. And I was at that time, people were wanting me to come play for them, come sing for them. Well, I get to church one Sunday. We had slowly migrated to doing Sundays at around three Sundays at three. And I felt that was kind of close because we were leaving another church to come to them. And it wasn't a problem until they started running over some Sundays. And I'm like, okay, so we had to start leaving early as they had some people that could fill in. So mind you, like I did this open mic night. I'm geeked. I start doing photo shoots um, with BJ and doing all kind of things like doing all kind of all kind of shows and stuff. I was going doing back um, back doing open mic nights. People were having me on their podcast. Now, mind you, all of this time, Pastor Teacher did not come to one event. I told him about every last one of them never came to not one. He stopped supporting my podcast. He never, he came on a couple of times. And after that, he didn't come on anymore. And I did a couple of things in the city, was invited to a couple of events. Never came. I said, okay. Well, one particular Sunday, I had been booked several months in advance at this point. Um, for an event going into the next year this was like the tail end of 2019 going into 2020 so while we are while we were in service I'm playing praise and worship went good this Sunday I flowed I was like I was not in a depressed state and if if you know any if you are really uh, for those of us that deal with depression and we are and that are creatives, I'm going to put it like this. A lot of times when we are depressed, we can't create like we really want to sometimes. And like when we get start creating again, we're back in that place and we're happy and, you know, things are going good. We're productive. And I was at that moment. Mind you, I had started therapy at this point. I finally started therapy at this point and getting to the root of some things. So I was getting better. And because they knew pastor teacher knew what triggered my anxiety. Right. So this particular Sunday, I'm at the height. I'm happy. Here he comes just casting a dark cloud all over it. Um, 
I'm happy for you that you have the opportunities. You know, it's good to have opportunities. And he was like, but God says that you need to figure out who you are. And I'm like, how is that relevant to what's going on now? I know who I am. I'm stepping into who I am. And he was like, don't take, don't do another photo shoot. Don't sing at another open mic. You know, don't do anything else until you can fully commit your, yourself to your ministry, to your church. Don't do anything else because you're not in place. You need to figure out what your place is and where you stand. And mind you, at this point, I'm more so pissed off and agitated. And I'm like, wow. I don't even feel like that's from God. Mind you, the whole time I'm praying and I'm like, this ain't right. This ain't right. So I let it go in one ear and out the other. And I asked the other minister about it. And we talked, we talked and we just chalked it up to pastor teacher being concerned. And my friend was very supportive. And at this point, I realized that we were in a sense, we were both pitted against each other um, because pastor teacher started isolating me in a sense. Um, he and other leaders would go out, but I was never invited. I said, okay. Or if, if it was something from the church people, I could dress androgynous, but I couldn't do too much because a lot of people didn't know and it was uncomfortable. And me, I was already kind of iffy um, at a point because of what he had said that Sunday about dressing out in ministry because I was very well prepared to leave the church and in hindsight I'm looking at that I felt like that was control so that I wouldn't transition so it and it was for his comfort and what other people in the fellowship thought of him and oh my gosh like it hurts my heart that I stall, I let someone stall my transition because of their discomfort now. And me, I'm thinking because they use the voice of God. And I'm thinking because they use the Lord said in the Holy Ghost and we were always taught to revere whatever your leader said. And I'm like, thinking back on it, this was like some cult shit for real, like some cult shit. But, and anyway, I felt I started feeling subconscious at this point and and it was like dang why am I doing this like for real so I let it stew for a moment I said no mm -mm, I can't this is my dream I'm like Lord if I'm being disobedient and I prayed and I prayed I didn't feel convicted I went on ahead and did a couple more photo shoots hung around BJ a couple more times and granted, BJ got on my nerves a lot because BJ ended up being a good user and a stunt queen. That's the story for another day. But then I stopped hanging with BJ because it started to become too much. And, and, and at this point, I was just, you know, doing my own thing as far as not really hanging around a lot of people, but there was another incident in 2019. Um, we went to an engagement party and I will never forget this. Um, we went to this engagement party um, and we go to this engagement party and pastor teacher says, when we get in here, don't get on my nerves because if you do, I'm not taking you anywhere else with me. And I'm like, really? I said, how am I going to get on your nerves? And I didn't know what to say because he, he said it as we were parking in the parking garage and I was perturbed and I felt some type of way because I'm like, that was motherfucking disrespectful. After I gave your ass a ride in my car. I said, I'm just going to be here to hang, have fun. I'm just going to hang with my crew. And if you see me standing alone, that's because I'm enjoying the music. And I left it at that. 
I ended up enjoying it. Had a good conversation with the other people. I danced. And okay, at this point, I'm dressed like a bush queen. Had a nice gold, black and gold threaded shirt. It's looking cute. And I'm just dancing, you know, being myself, enjoying me. And I get a video. People love sending videos. I got a video to my phone of me dancing behind the bar. And I'm sitting there just enjoying myself. And I'm like, why did you send me this video of me dancing? And I found that creepy. Like, I really found that creepy. And I think he was just being an asshole. I think Pastor Teacher was being an asshole at this point. Trying to make fun of how I'm dancing. But he can't dance either. Can barely twerk. All he does is irk. You know, that type of stuff. And I didn't think nothing of it. But I got down. I enjoyed myself. He was sitting up there with all the other the preachers and stuff. I'm like, honey, I weren't going to sit up there with you. No way. You with all these preachers. I am not that girl. Because me, yes, I'm in the church. But I, I didn't want to be your average church girl. And I think that was also the problem. I was a type. Yes, when I come to church, I do church business, but I have a life outside of church. And this was all while I was building my career and like doing open mic nights, going to sing here and there, doing different things and getting opportunities. So it, it was like something had shifted in me and Pastor Teacher's relationship. And I'm like, hmm. And at this point, me and the other minister, like, we were kind of not getting along because of things that were being said behind closed doors that I wasn't privy to. And I'm sure that my pastor said some things about me to the other minister because the other minister was being supportive and said, girl, I'm just worried about your sanity right now. I said, baby, ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm in therapy. And I am fine. Are you sure? I said, yeah, I'm okay. I'll let you know if I'm not okay. And he was like, are you sure? I said, yes. So at that point, we had started back really hanging out. And they were like, my they're still my best friend to this day. And we were talking back and forth. And they're like, okay, you all right. And we started hanging out, getting into shenanigans and things. We would have our disagreements and stuff, you know, like friends do. But, you know, we were hanging out during the summers. We would go to places like... Um, Nellies and stuff and like that and then we finally stopped going to Nellies because you know racism and we would just explore different things and and we were because we were working together as musicians for another church and we would often I would often pick him up you know so I could go play because we had to be at service right after that so there were times at this point to where we may be a little late getting from service. And at first I was to blame for us leaving that church late. And I'm like, no, it's not me. And then, you know, there were some other factors in why we were late. And so we were running late and he would always fuss, but I'm like, we're working. You told us to go work here. So it got to where we were able to fix the schedule and everything to where we would just leave early and go to go to our service. And things were actually on a good plane. I was back doing praise and worship, but there would be some Sundays where we would be going to other churches. So we weren't really having services at our at our space for a while. And. It was a wild time. It was a wild time because so much had transpired. So, but that's all I'm going to talk about right now. Um, join me next week. We're dropping this every Wednesday um, for chapter three. Don't forget to use the hashtag church girl. That's church G U R L. That's a U, not an I in girl. So, I love y'all so much. Y'all love love and be free. Smooches. Oh, 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 oh.